Hi, hello, hey, and welcome to episode two in 2022 of Rushed Vibes. I am your host, Jessica Rush Vibes Rushing, accompanied by my co-host, Mr. David Rush Vibes Rushing. And we're in the building. Yeah, I'm being mad corny right now. To so rush just, the vibe with our start. tribe. So off the off the rip, as they say, uh, much better focus, I would say, looking at the monitors. Last episode, our first time back in mm-hmm. in a while. So I feel like we should get we should get some grace. But um we definitely have to do like a practice, a real practice. Yeah, definitely the solo shots were a little a little fuzzy. We look good. A little fuzzy. Uh the 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 wide not so much. But uh yeah, it was a little fuzzy. And I think what had happened was because we had started recording, and then we had to stop because Sonoma so, woke up. Yes. So I cut the cameras off to save battery life and keep them from overheating because the longer they run, obviously, mm-hmm. the more susceptible they are to overheating. But when I turn them back on, the focus re- it kinda like resets in the cameras. Because oh. I have it set to manual focus. So they didn't uh they didn't return quite right and I, I was trying to eyeball it from like for mine, I was trying to eyeball it if it was in focus without actually being in the in the in the shot. So that's why mine looked really fuzzy. But you know, I went and got my hair did. He got his hair did. Got styled for the first time. Thank you, Norman. And uh yeah, shout out shout out to Norman. And um uh, we were getting ready to uh, make some moves, and Jess was like, "Hey, we should get a quick episode in, so that way we can we can have another episode done." <laughs> and I'm like, "Okay, I'm not used to I'm not used to last minute impromptu episode requests." So Sorry, that means I didn't. This episode's gonna be fire. No, it means it better be because I don't want to be wasting my time. There's no such thing as wasting. Your and time I'm under the weather too. When you're vibing. No, you, I'm under the weather, America. We cancel and nullify that. I'm not uh because we were getting ready to go on a trip I'm and not he's at, been fine until last I'm night. I'm not at my best. I got my nose is just a fa- it's a faucet. So upset. It's a faucet with the broken handle. It's just running. So, so upset. He's turned into sovereign whose nose has been running since October. Well, maybe I'm who she got it from. Maybe. Know. Maybe. But um So yeah, we're getting ready to go on a trip in my, our favorite rocket ship with Jesus on your chest. Jesus on my chest. World Vision. I got Rosa Parks. World Vision. Instagram. Go find them. Miss Parks. This is my birthday gift from my girl, Jacynthia. Can you see it? Let me move. Who is uh, expecting? She is. And I feel like she's been expecting for like two years now. Baby number four. I'm like, hey, she's still pregnant. <laughs> Seriously? I just feel like she should be due by now. This is what I'm saying. I feel like for the last year, she's been she's pregnant. She's due in June. Oh, okay. So... Probably like in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, she'll have the baby. Okay, baby, baby E, he's coming to join My us. My bad. No dis, no, no, no disrespect. I'm just saying, like, I just. It just seems funny that someone who's not the person pregnant finds that someone has been pregnant forever. I'm just saying. But I've been there where I've been like, man, she's still pregnant. She's still, um, she's still pregnant. So imagine being the pregnant person and still being pregnant. Yeah. Like so many people in our lives are pregnant, and I'm like, dang, forty weeks is a long time. I never even did forty weeks. Like with none of my kids did I make it all the way, and pregnancy felt epic. So I, I applaud people who keep having kids. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, um, so don't really have a topic, but I'm gonna go off the cuff. Just just bear with me. So I was innocently scrolling Twitter, minding my own Twitter business. Just do to do to do what's happening on Twitter. Cause I usually use Twitter as my avenue to complain to companies because that's the best way to get customer service at a company on Twitter. This and is, they will This is dangerous. It's it's not dangerous. This is dangerous. Um, I got my I got my glass here from last time. Will, I don't yeah, have anything. You'll clean in up it. after yourself. They will they will take care of it. So I'm scrolling Twitter and I just keep seeing the name Jesse Williams. So I'm like, why, like, wh- why is Jesse Williams trending on Twitter? And then I had to think, like, which Jesse Williams? Because I mean, not that I know any other Jesse Williams, but I was like, which Jesse Williams? Who are you talking about? Jesse Williams. He was in Grey's Anatomy. Oh, the light skin dude. Yes. Yeah. Have you seen that he's tw- trending on Twitter? I think I, I saw he blocked somebody. Yeah. Because 
I don't know why. Why did they block? Okay, so he he left Grey's Anatomy, and now he's on this. He's in this Broadway movie, and he has a full on nude scene in the performance on and Broadway. That, on Broadway, he's naked, full on on the stage. On stage, and I think they were like pouring water on him at some point. So while he's naked, I didn't know that they did that. I guess I they thought do. it was just like movies where you had nude scenes. No, he's. Fresh out of the birth canal, butt ass naked, naked. butt ass. Uh, so there's no like cinematography we won't, we won't, or anything. We won't be going to see that one. Anything allowed in the theater? You're not allowed in New York <laughs> until that's so funny. Until you the say play that. is over. So you're not allowed to take pictures. No photography is allowed. Somebody got a picture slash a recording of him during his full frontal nude scene and leaked it on Twitter. There's a lot of leaks going on it, lately. It's a, this, it's a this, leaky. It's a leaky world. This leak is epic. and my nose is, is leaking. And people are losing their minds because, according to Twitter, Jesse's thing is thing. Again, I was just innocently strolling, strolling through my Twitterverse, just like going so through let me, the let comments. Me, the comments. The let comments. Me, I. I, I I, I need to talk through something because I, 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 I no I, I want to get something straight. So I was at my desk minding my own business right mm-hmm. just now. And you came to me and said you wanted to record. So let me find out. You asked me to come record so you could talk about another man's junk. Right. No, I, 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 said, I know I, I just I, I want to make because I, I, I know have a, I have a direction that I'm going because I, I know I know you know better. <laughs> Then to abruptly <laughs> interrupt my my flow, we're getting ready to go to the to airport. get me to record to talk about another man's no, genitals. I mean, the what I'm getting to is that Twitter is relentless. We already know that comments, we didn't need the comments in themselves are amazing. But to your initial comment about like not going to New York, like so many men and husbands are on there talking about like their wives are not allowed to go see bro- any Broadway shows. They're not going there. But because of all of this, Broadway has changed. Like they're installing infrared cameras. Or yeah, because you're not supposed to be. You're not to supposed make to be sure recording. People it. don't record it. So people are wondering: Are his is has he been violated? And I feel like it's an it's a fine line because you know you signed up to be in this play. However many people are in the audience, three, four, five hundred people yes. are seeing you naked. Yes. Why is it a violation? It's if, sexual harassment. How? Because you Isn't take it sexual harassment if I go to a play and then some dude's junk is just placed in front of me. No, because you should know what the play is about. Do they specify that there's nudity when there's nudity? I believe so. I feel like there's a nudity disclaimer. Like all the ratings on like movies and stuff. That like the, that play. I would. I feel like Broadway is just different. Nah, I feel like most people going to a play have the ability will will have some form or fashion will know that there may be extreme or varying degrees of nudity. So if you were an actor and you were given a role yes, that required you to be fresh out the birth Him canal being naked, naked is not sexual harassment. Someone taking a picture and then putting it online when there aren't supposed to be, those devices aren't supposed to be allowed in the venue for that specific reason, that's the harassment part. Well, I don't know that they take the, your phone from you. Right, but they tell you not to record and not to take pictures. Okay. Like we watch Hamilton fifty eleven times, and it says, "Please suspend all electronic recording devices." But that's Hamilton. It's to say it was a Broadway, right? Yeah. Okay, I mean, I guess, so it's, I guess I. It's kind of confusing because, like, you voluntarily, while being paid, chose to be naked in front of however many people are in this audience, and now the ratings of this show have skyrocketed because people are trying to see it in person. So it's just. Do people not know that like porn is free online? You don't need to drive <laughs> halfway to, across the country to go to is, spend it's quality spend like the quality of Broadway. a week's worth of salary to go to Broadway to see some man's junk. You can go, you can grab your lotion, I you mean, can go straight into the living just, room. Now they can just go on. You can Twitter. pull, you can pull the blinds. Now they can just and go you on can Twitter. type in your favorite website of choice, and you spent but no should money. Twitter should Twitter be regulating this? Like I didn't even know nudity was allowed. So Twitter, on Twitter. is surprisingly like. Liberal. very liberal when it comes to uh pornography because you could just like end up 
Yeah, really? like something could just fly across your timeline and it's just like straight porn. There may be a time limit, like uh, the length of a certain video that you can post, but I've seen just stuff being retweeted, stuff, you know, following a trending topic, like trying to figure out what it is. And then there's just like a full blown. It's a dangerous rabbit hole. Yeah. But they say it's, it's nowhere near like what Tumblr was before. Oh, because Tumblr. Tumblr was Tumblr was something else. I, I didn't partake. Mom. I didn't, I didn't partake, but from what I I hear, I had a blog. What my sources are telling me is that Tumblr was pretty wild, but yeah, uh, Twitter, surprisingly, they're they're not, it's crazy that they will like (laughs) suspend Donald Trump for whatever they suspended for. I don't even, Donald Trump could come back. I don't even remember at this point why he was, why he was, uh, why he was banned. Spreading false news. But you can have like just straight somebody on the, like just straight raw dog and someone is, and it'd be fine it's it's surprising to me so kids do not need to be on twitter it's a dangerous place I mean, kids don't need to be on social media adults in don't general. need to be <laughs> adults, this is true adults don't need to be on twitter but now Elon, uh, so i i oh, the only context i had was that he had blocked someone because they made um a very uh a very inappropriate comment something like they would <laughs> oh, no. they would suck the white the the black half the whatever amount of black or white he is i can't remember which which side they were they were they were targeting but said they would suck the that amount out of him was their comment and then he blocked them rightfully so because that's harassment that is harassment yeah maybe that maybe that's harassment more so than someone taking a picture and leaking but still that's like i don't know if you can say it's an invasion of privacy but if you think about the fact that you aren't supposed to record or take pictures in that venue, it's a control supposed to be a controlled space. Mm-hmm. I think you can make the argument that it's an invasion of privacy. So what if it was like an artist who has a photographic memory who then left the theater and drew a spot on depiction of it and sold that picture? Would that still be the same? But it's same? not actually Jesse Williams. It's the likeness of him. It's uh, he could probably sue if they didn't get his, he could, they, you could probably have a case in court. I don't know if we have to ask Esquire, but I feel like that's within the means of someone suing for for likeness. Okay. I I just I don't know. Anywho, it's not like you're on the on the red carpet and you say, "Hey, Jesse, can I take a picture?" Like he's he's in his element, he's performing, performing he's doing his craft, and you take a picture when you know you're not supposed to, and you leak it. So I hope they find out whoever that person was, and I hope that they punish them severely. To my initial question. I don't know what that punishment should be, but you should be punished. To my question. Think about it next time. If Consequen- you were, choices, if, actions have consequences. If you were an actor, do you think you could ever do like a full on nude scene? Would you? I don't know. I guess my No, thought- I'm saying, could I do it with you? Am I doing it with you or just somebody else? Oh, I don't want to be nude. Oh. Who is, always- who is it? <laughs> It'd be yourself, like Jesse. Just at me? The, at the, oh, I thought you meant like with at somebody. At the top of a stage. With like another, no, with like an actress. Is- I don't say like do I have my pick like no, who I get to you check? don't get your pick. <laughs> uh, uh, could I do a nude like completely nude, not like with the little tape stuff that they do sometimes no. with like film and TV? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I it 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 depends. I'm not, but I'm not in. I it's don't. Not your craft. It's not my. So I don't know if I could ever become that dedicated that. I could completely lose myself in a character and be comfortable doing anything so long as I was in character. Like, I don't know if, if I could be that person because I'm not an actor mm-hmm. or not yet. At least if anybody wants to, you know, give me a, give me a tryout. I'm more than kids, willing to, three kids put through yeah, comments, I'm more than so. willing to try not nude scenes and we work our way up to that, but I mean, for um, the right price, he can do a new scene. No, you're not my, you're I'm, not my I'm agent. His, his no, agent, you're, his you just, I just got okay with giving you EP credit. Like, Let's calm down. I I don't okay. know why you just got okay with it. I've let's been calm. I've been EP. Let's let's calm down. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't I don't know if I could or not, but that's crazy that somebody mm-hmm. somebody took a picture and, and they were close. They were like front row, the first couple rows. That's wild. So they you know the corner, to- the heel of your shoe is just in the frame of the uh, the wide shot. That's interesting. Excuse me. The heel of your force Air Force. It's in the corner of the. Just on the corner of the wide shot. <laughs> I was like, and I still, I forgot to take the stickers off, the instruction yeah. stickers off too. The one that nobody right. noticed. Um, Maybe for epi- no, somebody, somebody will notice. Maybe for episode three, we'll, 
We'll have it all together. We'll clean up our act. All right. What you got? I have nothing. This was you. I have nothing. I have nothing. This is the second time you've nothing. sung this song today. Nothing. So tell people what we're about to do. Hopefully get to Vegas. <laughs> it's been the point what time we call this Uber. I'm uh, it's to twelve Vegas. it's twelve forty eight and our flight is at two fifty nine. So we're gonna be cutting it close. Uh we're going to Vegas for the first time. Uh I've never been. That's why I just said first time. Jessica has been twice. Twice, but both times she was pregnant, so she couldn't she couldn't wild out. I couldn't Vegas. Like she thinks she's gonna do this time, but I'm gonna be checking her. <laughs> Try if you want to. I uh, there is no, there is no, there is no try. As soon as I get to the airport, I am no longer anybody's mom. I'm about to. Oh, you're not. Wild out. Nope. Oh, you gonna wild out? I'm gonna wild out. Oh, okay. Wild out. Okay. Cool. Just straight Vegas. Yeah, I, I, I hope you do wild out. Vegas because you've been awfully conservative here lately, sir. I'm just saying. I'm just being honest. Take from that what you what you will, but anyways, yeah. Wow. So we're so we're going we're going to Vegas. I'm going to Vegas. He's gonna stay here. <laughs> we're going with to Vegas. His sick self. I'm sick. Y'all pray for me. Pray war. Pray what they call prayer warriors. Prayer warriors. Call them warriors. <laughs> Come in agreement and uh, send some good send some good energy to toward brother rushing because I I need it. I, I need it. A hot mess. Yeah. So yeah. So we disperse the children. I can see my triangles too. Yeah. Looking good. I know. I've told you this. Appreciate it. Um, Disperse the children amongst the grandparents. Yeah, Had to split are, them up. Kids are gone. Because uh, three kids, it's hard to just drop them all on one person, especially when one of them has to go to school. So disperse the children. And I'm actually very excited because I feel like as we were preparing for child number three, everyone kind of unintentionally reminded us that three kids are a lot and kind of made it seem like we weren't going to be able to like live and do stuff because we have three kids. So then it became my mission to make sure we lived like, yes, we're, we're going to do stuff. We, we went to the beach with the kids. Like we've done, we do stuff with the kids, but I think it's very important for us to do stuff for us. So I'm very excited about this trip. I'm excited. It's David's first trip to Vegas. And I'm really counting as my first trip to Vegas because I feel like I've I have like you, like I said I haven't Vegas. Um, so it's it's fun. Like we I don't know that we've ever really had a vacation. I know we haven't done an international trip just the two of us. This this will be the first tr- vacation trip whatever I've taken where I'm I've gone on where I'm not taking any work tools at all. Okay. I'm leaving my phone. I'm leaving my laptop. And I know normally when we go somewhere, which is usually locally. It's because of somebody's somebody's job. Either I have a work trip, the girls come with me, they stay in the hotel room or they run around during the day, or Jessica has a work trip, we go down with her, she does what she needs to do, and then we and then we hang out as a family. Um, so this is the first trip, I think, where one, it's a vacation just for us, and then also not attached to to a work trip. So yeah, it'll be it'll be nice. Cause yeah. like even when we went to Mexico, that was for someone else's wedding. Mm-hmm. It wasn't um, truly a vacation. Yeah, it wasn't like. I mean, vacation, it was because it. Yeah, I mean, it's a vac- a wedding at a resort, but like it was this. This is something that we planned and we said we were going to do. Like I saw the advertisement for the Lovers and Friends Festival, and I didn't think David would go for it, and he's like, he was like, sure. So yeah, I'm, like, I'm coming. I'm okay. Kinda, I'm kind of regretting my. You don't want to go to the festival. I'm not. A, I'm not a big. It's a festival. I thought yeah. it was a concert. It's a festival. Oh, so it's going to be like... like festival a, stuff? Like carousels and stuff? No, I mean... Like prizes fest- and... It's going to be like Coachella. I've never been to Coachella, so... Me neither. Okay. But you've been, you've I been feel made, like that's just a big concert. It's different stages. Okay. You can just kind of wander and pick who you want to listen to and different show times and stuff. Yeah. I've worked music festivals, so I think I... Like yeah. I, know what you I mean, mean, yeah, I'm not all. It's, it's going to be hot, and I'm not all that excited about it. But I, I gave you the option to skip it. You're excited. If you want to hang with Omar, I can give your ticket to Amanda. First, and she can come with. First us. of all, first of all, you're not just going to ditch me. Second of all, technically you're, not, you're ditching no, me. No, I said I'm not all that excited about it because you know how I am with, with people. 
but yeah, uh, you don't like them. <laughs> so like, so I like a selective amount of people. It's just a lot of people. It's gonna be hot. I gave you an out. Yeah, you did. And but I want to go to Vegas. You're going to Vegas. Yes, you can I go know. To Vegas I'm, and I'm then going. Just I'm going. I'm going to Vegas, and if you know, uh, I'll probably go to the festival. And you could leave early. We could leave early. Yeah, right. You gonna get there with your cousin and and your girl, and y'all gonna be nowhere to be found. I'm gonna be like, babe, let's go. You gonna be like, ah, I, we just, I don't. We just got here. I feel like you can call an Uber. Yeah, dismissive. That's fine. Just dismiss me. Oh, uh-huh. you can you can run along. You can you go can back to the. You can go back to a cigar lounge. Because those places are so universal. Are they? Yeah, like I mean, uh, you can go you to a go, cigar lounge in any, any city you just, you just and fit any, in. You just go to any lounge and you can just do whatever. Yeah, okay, sure. Yes, so, I gotta deal with. I'm just texting this my mama. My mama texting me. Hey, mom. Uh, she says trade safe travels. <laughs> Little does she know, <laughs> we still at the house. Still at the house. Uh, Twenty minutes. I don't know how long this is gonna go. Um, yeah, but Vegas is cool. Obviously, we have we have uh, <laughs> our 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 girls' godparents live there. So hopefully we can see them. Um, have you spoken? I have not. Yeah, I, haven't I mean we've spoken, but like that Omar, was last I, week. I talked to Omar like a couple of weeks ago, and he was like, "So yeah, we're currently scheduled to be there, like currently." But you know they'd be moving, so they on the move, stay on, on the move. move. So my vision for this episode now that we've talked about it. So we're gonna go to Vegas and we're gonna take pictures and you know do all the things, and then maybe David with his super duper editing skills. <laughs> can like input those things into the video and it can kind of be like this is what we did while we were in vegas when you go to vegas do this if you went to vegas let us know so next time if we go to vegas we know what to do so uh my editing skills are not super duper they're 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 okay uh mainly because i haven't done it in six months so i'm a little rusty okay even just to be okay uh I don't know if I how I feel about turning a podcast episode into half pod, half vlog, which is what that would be. Um, I'm so not we quite just sure. Use the, so we just do this half of the episode, and then while we're in Vegas, we collect things, and then the other half of this episode can just be our conversation about what we did in Vegas. See, this is why you don't give is anybody executive producer credit because then it's be running First all willy nilly. No gave me. It'll be running all willy all willy nilly with all these I crazy ideas. Earned it. Earned it how? As, I keep telling you, you are the talent. Look, if Angela You're Bassett the talent. is executive producer not, on 911, I'm executive producer on Rushed Vibes. Okay, first of all. That's you, part of my name. I will, came up with the name of the podcast. The name wouldn't have been possible if it weren't for me. So, calm down. I can Do not you, invoke, invoke Sister Angela's name, okay? Do not. All right? You don't, you don't know her like that. Goodness, that's why you don't just give anybody EP credit because then they just be thinking that they can just do whatever. We have a process here, okay? This okay. is very, it's very form- this EP, is very. Why don't you have something ready to bring this to the This is very table? formulaic because I was in my office finishing up the prior week's episode when you came in and was okay, like, let's, then, rec- then let's, let's record. Cut it. No, we're not going to cut it. We're here now. We're going to do it. Just got to see. And now she's trying to, now she's trying to cut the episode. You just can't have anybody serving as your, as your EP. You got to be careful, America. You got to be careful. So Kevin Samuels is dead. <laughs> oh my god. Why? Oh. Because this is a conversation that needs to be had. I think it's a conspiracy. See, I no, think, no. I think they plot I think it, for in one, okay. Let's 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 take a pause, right? Let's put a pin in that. A 30 second timeout. No disrespect to Kevin Samuels. Rest in peace. God bless the dead. No disrespect to his people, um, but you got to be a sig- really significant figure for there to be a reason to cover up your death. Like you got to be important. And he was—he had a hundred. Yeah, at one point, no, I think someone had, killed him. So what are you talking about? You think somebody killed him? Yeah, that's the that's the conspiracy. I think he said the wrong thing to the wrong woman because he's always the. And I've only listened to a handful of his things. I honestly didn't even know who he was. I knew, I knew who he was by face and seeing like 
spiritual world and the shade room and all of those posts like conversation he had with women but i didn't know him spiritual world (laughs) but i didn't know him by name so people were like oh he's dead he's dead he's dead like he used to go in on women and he went in on men too so i never saw that stuff oh interesting how that works out but the stuff i saw that he was very convenient very convenient it was it seemed hurtful like no it was just honest Oh, so you're you're a fan? No, I'm not a fan. I just think that people have to be able to separate tone from message, and the way somebody delivers something, while yes, is a part of the part of how people receive it. But you got to be one mature enough, uh, and two, if you're at, you come on the show, right? People call in. He doesn't go mm-hmm. out and find people. They call in. Number one. So if you're going to come into that arena, you need to know what to expect. And you need to know what his uh, what his approach is. And if he's going to tell you how it is, he's going to tell you how it is. So you got to be able to separate the message from the tone. And I don't think a lot of people were able to do that. Now, was some of his stuff uh, mean? Could he have been uh, a bit softer? Absolutely. But again, when you go into someone else's space, knowing how they are, knowing how they do things, that's consent. You go in there knowingly, or you go in there knowing that you might get your feelings hurt if you if you can't dissect what the message that he's trying to give you from the tone. And I think that's that's like sixty percent of all the outrage. Now, did he have to be that way? Like, would I be that way if I was giving relationship advice to women? No, I wouldn't. But I'm I'm a different person. Maybe I'm not a high value man. I don't know. Maybe that's the difference between me and Kev. I I don't know. That's for somebody else to decide. I probably wouldn't be as uh, blunt as Kevin was. But it's his show. He has the right to be how he wants wants to be. And people were tuning in as evidenced by his 1.5 million YouTube followers. Subscribers, excuse me, and whatever, whatever numbers he had on social media. Controversy sells. We we know this. this is Algorithms true. love conflict. They love controversy. They love people talking about other people. That stuff is it. it the algorithms feed off that stuff. So people lean into it. And that's how you get Kevin Samuels and all the people on social media talking about how disrespectful he was and, the, and this about black women and that about black men and blah blah blah. Not that those feelings aren't aren't fair for those people to have. But it just feeds the machine. It feeds the Kevin Samuels machine, and that's how he got as big as he got. And what's funny is, had you ever have you ever gone back and seen like some of his earlier videos? <laughs> I've never even just let- do just do it because he was like, it was like when you when you see his videos, you know he's he's very controlled and deliberate. Like even with his movements, um, he's very very poised. And um, his earlier videos, he would be like advertising like fragrances and cologne and he would be like hey guys like what you need to do is i would say like totally different cat like completely different so he did i heard he was zesty he went he underwent some transformation like an image he must have gone like an image consultant or whatever uh because the kevin samuels that the world knew wasn't the kevin samuels that would like he's not the same person he was before he became Kevin Samuels before he became big which is interesting so if anybody out there hasn't and you care to you may not care to go look at like his earlier videos you'd be like I cannot believe this is the same dude because I was shocked so how, what was his plot like what was he he was he was a I think an image image consultant um and his his thing was he taught he uh he was a high value man so he would tell men and that's what, his phrase that's i think he coined it actually yeah uh and he would tell men how to want about themselves assess where they are and tell them if it's possible for them to get to that point and they would do the same thing for women because most women don't date down right they want to date up so he would he would tell them uh, if their aspirations uh were in line with where they actually were in life and sometimes people would um, they would kind of push back on his stuff and he would, you know, and depending upon how they did it, that's when he would get kind of sort of confrontational. And cause I, I don't think he would ever start off 
disrespectful. I think it was always oh, when it's people burned. you had to get there. I think so. I, I, I wasn't a big consumer of his stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, there was the one during the summer of 2020 where I, I think most people caught wind of him. Um, and he was, he, he was going off on, on a, on a, on a woman, a black woman. And it was, I was like, man, this is kind of, this is kind of disrespectful. And then most, but most people just saw the clip. It's an entire show, right? Like the conversation, it evolves. And most people didn't see the beginning. They just saw the part that was the most confrontational. Course, so that's what the clickbait now was. I'm not here. Yeah. I'm not here to defend Kevin well, Sanders, I, what I am here to do is provide context because a lot of that gets lost. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I have seen a bunch of stuff, uh, people online celebrating the fact that he died and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you know, you don't have to be broken up mm-hmm. over someone passing. Well, you shouldn't be out there, you know, rejoicing, trying to trying to throw a parade like that's that's kind of foul. I think the stuff that I was exposed from him, he I mean, essentially said that women, like women who had who were divorced, like I guess he had like a numerical system that he rated. Like, he would ask them, you're, 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 "What do you rate yourself?" And you can't use seven. You can't use seven. You can't use seven because most most people would say seven. Oh, I would say nine, but. And you, every bit of a baby. Aww. Absolutely. I. Sh- you should have said that you're actually a ten. You should have huh? been like you're selling yourself short. You're. I mean, you are. But you let me. But I can't let you get big headed. <laughs> I can't let you get a big head. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, words come back, don't they? They do. They mm, do come back, back around. Chickens, so I didn't appreciate that. Because, chickens coming home to roost. Because you know the idea of. So isn't that how Malcolm Malcolm said it? He would. Chickens coming home to roost never made me sad. In fact, it only made me glad. Yeah. yeah and that's when America turned on him. I mean, they were. Now America actually started to embrace him, and it was his own people that's who took him down. Farrakhan. But I'm not trying to get into that smoke. I can't believe they killed Denzel. They didn't kill Denzel. <laughs> All right, it's Denzel's one. It's one. Limit. It's one o four. All right, so I guess we're gonna wrap it up. No, we can oh, keep going. Not. I'm just letting oh, you know it's, it's one o four. You said it. Never mind. Let's continue. Um, yeah. So I just didn't appreciate how I don't appreciate when someone makes it seem like because like a woman has children. Um, don't forget she's though, you divorced. got you have to actually go through security. I don't because I'm special. Anyway, uh, that. She is less than pre-check. I just haven't gotten my pre-check, pre-check. because <laughs> there are no appointments available in Charlotte. So I'm going to have to go this, all the way to DC. This guy has pre-check. DC is the closest airport. Chocolate city. We coming, baby. For me to get my pre-check. Rush so, vibes from DC. So yeah. From chocolate city. We'll go up on a Sunday. And Anyways. So continue. yeah, I don't appreciate that because I actually know a lot of women who had children who's re- who have remarried and found phenomenal men and have phenomenal relationships. So putting that notion into a woman's head that you your worth is less because you have children, I don't I don't condone that. Well, but cuz you are notorious for interrupting me, I'm going I'm speaking. I'm speaking and I will speak. But I think it's also important if you're going to deduct points from a woman having a certain number of children, having divorce, then you need to make sure you're doing the same thing for men. Like men come with drama too. men come with baggage. You having children means that there's a woman you had those children with. And depending on your relationship with your children, that's a relationship you have with this person. So that if I'm single and I'm dating a man with children, I have to deal with that drama that may or may not be involved too. So the, it's it's. The, I feel like more when it comes to dating, when it comes to relationship, when it comes to who needs to be the perfect catch, all of that is put on the woman, and we and that's why all of these janky dudes are out here having women fall for them. And it's like you you're not even bringing anything to the table, like. She's bringing the table. She's bringing the utensils, the plates, the food, and then you're just coming in like I'm here. And I feel like we've we've shifted. I'm not a fan of that. So if if you're gonna criticize someone and say, oh, because you're divorced, because you have children, because of this, 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 and this, you need to make sure you're doing it on the other side too. So like to men, because you have children, because you may be divorced, whatever reason, what other baggage you may have, that needs to be held towards you as well that's just my that's my opinion on the matter and i could go i have like a whole series i want us to do on relationships and dating and marriage and 
even divorce and remarriage. Now you may speak. The floor is yours. Lord Rushing. So you must not have heard the point part where I said he does the same thing for men or did the same thing for men as well. It's just the women kind of conversations and the, the, uh, the back and forth with women was just more, more so viral. When he had conversations with men, they like, they yeah, took he it? called one dude like a fat mother. You know what? With a small, <laughs> yeah, it's one of my favorite clips. <laughs> he laid into him. And did he take it? Yeah, because people call in. Like I don't, I, I don't understand how people have the nerve to get upset calling in when you, put when you know what kind of when you know what kind of platform it is. That's like me going to a going to a boxing gym and sparring with somebody and getting upset when dude punches me in my face. Like you know what's gonna happen when you go in there. So if you go, if if you truly want the feedback of someone who is an image consultant who is a high value man, understand. That is going to come with a certain type of delivery. And that's for the men and, and, and the women. Like you, you, if you put yourself in that situation, like I'm not saying you, you, you have to assume all the blame. Like I said, I believe Kevin's delivery could have probably been a little more diplomatic, like a little softer, mm -hmm. but that's me. I'm not Kevin. It's Kevin's show. Kevin can do whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. Again, because people call, people stop calling in. Kevin's not, Kevin has no, he has no, no platform. I think I'm going to be a relationship coach. I feel like everyone's being a coach. You want to be a, go I think I could be a great relationship coach. Go for coach. it. Do you think I could be a good relationship I coach? I think if you want to go for it, you should go for so it. So you don't think I'd be a good I relationship coach? I think if you want to go for it, you should go Why for it. You can you? do, no, I I'm not you. saying, I'm not saying. Because <laughs> if you thought I'd be great at it, you'd be like, yeah, babe, I think, do it. I think you have enough going on as it is. Than to what? add something What's else on top thing? of it. I was it's, talking to someone about, they were like, oh, how many kids do you have? I said three. And she was like, I have five. But after three, it's like all the same. And I was like, you know what? You're right. There's like a new. Well, I, I won't find out. I'll but take I'm her saying, word. I'll take her word for I'm it. I'm saying in the degree of parenting, once you exceed two kids, it's just like you're in a different club. Nah. You're in a different league. Nah. And I feel like you nah. gain a different kind of respect when people are like, oh, like because one no. and two, like that's easy. But three and up. We won't find out. We're in a, we're different. We're a different caliber of parent. Sure. We're you don't not. recognize that? Like we are definitely a different caliber of parent. We've elevated three people, three dependents. And that's all we'll ever know. But I could definitely be a relationship. I think coach. you should. I think if that's what you want to go for, you should. But also consider the fact that you already carry a heavy load. I do. But that's not why you're saying it. You don't think I'd give good relationship <laughs> no, advice. No, I, I think you, I mean, if I didn't think you'd be good at relationship advice, like, then obviously that would mean I didn't think that you knew what it took to be in a good relationship, which would be like, why am I with you then? I mean, you could just been like, I've already done it no, for years. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not that guy. So, uh, I'm not here to waste, she's, I'm not here to waste, of my children. I'm not here to waste anybody's time, mine or, or anyone else's. So no, I think, yeah, obviously I think you'd be good at it. It's something you'd have to grow. You wouldn't just step in and be like, you know, Gandhi, the Gandhi of of, like of relationships Gandhi or whatever. Just think of anybody who was at the peak of, of their profession. Kevin like, Samuels. His position to, is now it, vacant. You'd have to work at it. But sure, why not? You can do anything you put your mind to. I feel like Tabitha. Tabitha Brown could be a good relationship coach. She'd be real loving and gentle. She would. What else is happening in the world? Uh, There's a war in Ukraine. I don't care about that. It's um. What? It's one. It's it's <laughs> one. Of, one eleven. I I don't. I I don't care. I I have feelings on the matter specifically because of how people who were not white. I think it's unfortunate. I think, it, oh, I think yeah. it's tragic. War, war is not a good thing. But I don't care. But it's it's. I, I don't have to, and you don't have to, and you don't have to, and you don't have to care about everything. You don't always have to care about somebody else's problem. That's deep. It's. That's I, it, actually a really good thing to know. To but say. it's true. Like you don't have to bear the weight of everybody else's issues. You can you can be sympathetic. You can say, "Man, I'm sorry." You can say, "Damn, that's crazy." <laughs> but that you sucks. don't. You don't have to. You don't have to be the savior of everybody for, for everyone. It's God. It's God's job. Like it's. I said I've I've really had to because you know me I got a superhero complex so it's really hard for me to not. 
my my instinct is anytime I hear of like some atrocity happening anywhere, any level of it, I'm like, oh man, like what could I mean? I'm like, no. Like this particular one, this is not my fight. This how many billions of dollars have been sent to Ukraine already, right? And how many more billions will be sent? That haven't been sent to other countries that we're having. That haven't been sent to Philadelphia. Oh. Or Flint, Michigan. Or Flint. Or anywhere Southside any Chicago. Anywhere else in the United States that's impoverished. Like I get it. You can't just spend your way out of some of these issues. Like you have to actually get like commitment and, and action from people on the ground. And it's not just a, just a, it's not a blank check problem or blank check solution, but you know, we got inflation going, going, going crazy. We got, uh, got housing crisis in terms of people not being able to buy homes. We've got companies buying up all, all the, you know, all the, the vacant homes and then renting them for, ridiculous prices like we've got enough parks. we've got enough problems here that our government can focus on solving and yes people and entities can walk and chew gum at the same time and can 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 solve multiple problems at once but i see the number i see the the number of of aid going out and i don't necessarily see that see anything comparable happening for things here I mean, maybe it's just the fact that the Democrats in the administration aren't good at uh, boasting, being boastful and saying, oh, we've done this. We've done this. We've spent, we spent this. We spent that. Um, I know. Or maybe I know. Just not good. I know we were in a two year. Pa- we were in, in a really crazy point of a pandemic for two years and people only got three stimulus checks mm-hmm. that weren't that were well spaced out. <laughs> like and uh, and Ukraine got a like like that. This so true. I'm just saying. No disrespect. If, if anybody who's watching this has family in Ukraine, obviously, I, I don't mean to be distasteful. Um, I don't mean to be disrespectful. I think it's, it's absolutely terrible what's happening. But I I don't see it as something that I have to truly concern myself with. It doesn't it doesn't hit close to home for me. And mm-hmm. that might be unpopular, but that's how I feel. And I just I'm just being honest. I appreciate I mean, that's for you. That's like a really blunt. Because for me, I was I was dealing with guilt for not because it's one of those like put yourself in their shoes what if it was happening to you blah 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 so like you think from that perspective but then i got real upset when i started to see how africans were being treated who were in there how they were you know just straight up being disrespected and i mean that was really my big thing that i was sharing online where it was like you guys there's a war happening and there's still time for racism um which just kind of like confirmed that you know the human race is still the human well, race um, countries always going countries always going to take care of their own first this in, in, in I, situations I it, of but war you would like to think that the goodness of humanity will humanity ain't good i know <laughs> i know what, what but goodness like people want people want you to think that humanity's good I, that, that's, so when that's, humanity, that's, un, that's unfair i think the general human i think humanity's good but there's a lot of there's a lot of bad in humanity good. too. You're right. You're right. Yeah. So I think that's where I was kind of torn. Where I was like, "Well, you're not even taking care of people who look like me, and I'm I'm supposed to be all stressed and concerned and all of that." So, but then there's also there's literally a war I believe that's taking place in either Ethiopia or Eritrea or Sudan and in, in Eastern Africa that no one's talking about. And I think one of the members of the United Nations. He was talking about. He's like everyone's talking about Ukraine, 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 Ukraine. But there's there are wars that are taking place that have been taking place in Eastern Africa. You know, you've got the issues with the Rohingyas in Asia, where they're like they're having a whole diplomatic issue, where one pe- group of people are saying they run the country, another pe- people are saying they run the, the country. There's some stuff ethnic stuff happening in like the borderlands of china don't don't even start talking about taiwan no one's talking about taiwan issues there so it's just like there's so much happening but it's like ukraine so then at the end of the day people are always like why does it have to be about race because at the end of the day like race always seems to be the foundation of things i don't care about none of it i know you don't like unless you know and and that's that's probably selfish uh, and I may not be but aware, I, and okay I may not, be and I may not be aware of how some of these uh, conflicts actually do impact America mm-hmm. indi- indirectly or in- indirectly, and, and that's fair. I'll, I'll just, I'll just cop to being naive, but I don't care. <laughs> like I, I just don't. It's, it's, 
I mean, there's enough to care out of about. Sight. It's out of sight, out of in mind. In your own life, that to add yeah. on someone else's burden, like yeah, we got things happening here in in America. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, right? we just we in just our house. we just like, talked about Roe v. Wade. Uh, you know, they student loans. Yeah, we still have student loans, um, and I promise you. I mean, I usually lean left, but let let. Let a Republican Tea Party Green Party candidate show up. Talk about we will cancel student loan debt. They won't. They won't. But if you do, if you want this vote, I'm letting you know. I am hoeing my See, vote out. I am. I am hoeing this vote. Oh out. no, if no, you you're, no, you're not. Here and if you you're put not it hoeing on, nothing. If you put it on paper that you will eliminate this student loan debt, you can have it. America. Legs don't, spread everything. You can listen. have this vote. Don't listen to her. It's yours. Look, See, that's what's wrong. You, you takers. <laughs> you take, you take, you take. I'm not taking. I'm trying it to give wrong. these student it loans was wrong. to somebody. It was wrong. Country. Now, you know what's, what's funny about the student loan thing real quick um, is uh, you, it's, oh God, it's so funny. Um, in moments of like tragedy and like uh, like the pandemic or 9-11 or, um, you know, during elections, people, they try to like really rally, you know, rally around. You know, like, oh, we're American. Like, we got to look out for one another. Yeah. But it's so funny when it comes to student loans, the number one argument is that, well, I paid mine off. So why should somebody else, why should somebody look, else basically get a free, get a free education? Blessed. Congratulations. And I'm you just like, off. and I'm like, I can't imagine how self it's, I don't know if self-centered is the word or, or maybe it's like main character syndrome. Like I, I can't imagine what kind of person I would have to be to understand like simple statistics. Like we always talk about wage gaps and the fact that if student loan debt was wiped out, it would lift like some wicked number of black Americans out of poverty. Like it would immediate, like overnight, that many more black Americans <clears throat> would have much more of a fighting chance to have a more American dream. Mm-hmm. Um, and just things like that, right? Because we hear all these initiatives about, Oh, we're, we're listening. We hear you. You're not. We're, we're going to be better. We have to fix these issues. We have to do what's right. Build back better. No, no, no build back better. Make but then America you hear stats again. like, yo, a, like a simple stroke of a pen would do this for a demographic that has disproportionately been affected by uh by by wage by wage gaps net worth gaps um and then it's only getting worse because of you know inflation and then and whatever it's like just overnight and that's just one that's just black people like i'm sure there are uh, many other demographics mm-hmm. that would um be uh would would benefit from it now i'm like i'm like this i signed on the dotted line i'll pay the student loans if i have to right if so if 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 biden says only people not named david get their student loans wiped out i won't be mad i'll pay him like i don't care if he says bro i'm 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 look out for you i'm like cool i appreciate it either way I, i don't care like I, it's a it's a commitment I made, so I'll pay it. But just like when someone offers to to work a shift for me at work, if I really need, if you know, if this is in the goodness of the heart, I'm like yeah, sure. I, who wouldn't take it off, right? Like who wouldn't, uh, you know, because that's a Friday night I get or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like if somebody offered to take a shift for me when I was a cashier at Walmart, like who wouldn't? So I don't care, but I wouldn't be upset if they did it and I was left outside of whatever the parameters were, because think of. How many other, like, we live a good life right now, Mm -hmm. like a really good life. Like we get to go to Vegas and we get to go to Palm Springs and we are able to have a nanny. We have autonomy with the majority of our time because of the kind of jobs that we've been able to secure because of the educations we have and because of the kind of upbringing that we have. Like we are in a really good spot in our lives. But just as we think about what's happening in Ukraine and all that's horrible, like think about all the people here in this country who don't have the ability to live the kind of life that we live because they're burdened down by, by debt because they didn't have uh, financial liter They didn't get taught financial literacy. Um, they came from a single parent household. So they mm-hmm. thought the only way to get out of 
their circumstances was to go to school. And the only school they got into was this private school that had a ridiculous amount of uh, yearly tuition and they had to apply for loans and they got those loans. And then all of a sudden things change, right? It's not so simple as go to school, get an education, get a job, you're set mm-hmm. for life as, which is what the generation before it, before us taught. It's nah. you go to school, you get this big ass, uh, uh, debt statement and you got to pay it off. And even after you've paid off the principal, you still have all this interest to pay off. Like think about how many people's lives could be changed mm-hmm. for the better. Good people. Um, and I got the nerve to sit here and be upset about it because it doesn't directly impact me, but we're supposed to be all American and all in tough moments and times of, of, of so stress and, and tragedy. Like, nah, like get out of here with all that. So I don't, I don't care. Like if they, if they do it, I think it would be great. Um, if they do uh, anything, they've already canceled like $17 billion worth of student loans, which, which is mind boggling because $17 billion is a lot of money, but I feel like, and it still hasn't wiped out all the student loans. So I'm like, like how big is that bottom line that they've literally forgiven $17 billion worth of student loans. And there's still a cry to forgive the rest of the student Mm -hmm. loans. It's just, it's, it's amazing to me, but no, I, I wouldn't care. I don't care, um, whether they do it or not. Like, again, I think if they do it, a lot of people would get a lot of relief at a time where a lot of people are hurting financially. Mm -hmm. Rent is going up like crazy. Um, people are being, you know, with these, like here in Charlotte, new developments are going up. People are getting pushed out of neighborhoods. Uh, I think it would be very beneficial, but me personally, I'll pay them if I have to, if not, you know, I won't. But uh, it's, I don't know, it's just a lot of phony people out there and uh, a lot of self-centered people and a lot of people who don't actually truly care about um, benefiting others because if you, if you were, you wouldn't care about mm-hmm. whether, you had to, whether you had to struggle and pay off your student loans. That struggle wasn't for nothing. Like you're able to do it, like good for you and you're where you are in life. Um, but somebody else's circumstances may be different and they may not have had maybe some of the safety nets you had or had some of the, some of the guidance that you had or some of the opportunities you had and live in some of the neighborhood, the same neighborhood that you did. All that stuff matters and it all adds up. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I just, it's missed me. That's just, that's just the only argument I hear and I, and I hate it. And it's just ridiculous. And most of the money and one it's the government's money that most of it has already been like forgiven anyway and they clearly have it because they're and over here throwing we can dollars print, to ukraine we can print yeah i'm about to say we can print as much money to send to ukraine so you know they forgive their own their own loans they just forgive their own loan yes i imagine it's in some form or fashion taxpayers will have to feel the burden but of course you know i don't necessarily want to pay for social security but hey i'm doing it every single week every week all the time all the time i don't know where my i might like cousin lamont and and uh, and and Mark, we were talking about this at the last smoke night. It was like, I just want to know where my taxes are going. Like, it would be nice if I could get like an itemized receipt. An itemized receipt that would be so great on your paycheck like, if you could just see where it was going. Because I guarantee you, if people could actually see it, <laughs> their their money is going to things far worse mm-hmm. than paying than subsidizing somebody else's education because student loans have been forgiven. Like, there's some there's so much more that they would be riled up about, but they don't know because they can't see it. Uh, and that's the only, that's that's the reason. So you got me you got me going. I did, and I haven't even. Been I didn't able. realize. I was like I accepted, I wasn't going to be able to put anything. I in, didn't so realize I that here. was inside of me. It was. I didn't woke, realize woke I was there. The beast. But I'm glad I got it out. So now maybe I can. If we make this flight, I can go to sleep. We're about to go make this flight now. All right. All right, tribe. It's been real. Oh, and we Take just about us. we just about got an hour too. Nice. We're seven minutes short. Take us out, man. Uh yeah so. Subscribe on YouTube if you're watching us um, there or whether you're listening to us or watching us, subscribe. So if you're listening to us on Apple, Spotify, subscribe if you haven't. Leave a review, especially uh, if, if you've been listening to us for a while and haven't left one because that Ask helps. Ask a relationship question so I can start my, my coaching <laughs> that, that, business. That helps, us, that helps us show up in algorithm stuff. Maybe we'll add a relationship relationship segment. I would segment. love to do like an ask corner where we like people ask questions and we answer them. A relationship segment. Uh, maybe we'll start doing a mailbag as well. Um, if you're watching on uh, YouTube, subscribe, notifications so that you know when episodes drop. We we feel like we're going to start releasing on a different day. We don't quite know what day it is yet, so we'll just be testing as as the week's going. But eventually, we'll settle on a day of the week. It just depends on you know how life is. And um, we appreciate you watching. Appreciate you listening. Um, not sure when this will drop. At what point in the week it drops, but 
Uh, because it's Thursday now, I'm going to tell you all to have a good weekend. Be safe. Um, kiss your mama if if she's still here. If, if not, you're going to be in Vegas, we'll my, see you in my, Vegas. My, my, yeah, if you're going to be in Vegas, come find us because we'll we'll be out there. And my hairstyle is kind of it's kind of unique. So you'll see him. Um, you'll you'll see me with the tall straight up ponytail. But yeah, appreciate you guys listening. Love you. Be safe, and we'll catch you guys. On the next one. Going for some growing pains. Bye. Yeah. None but some growing pains. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. can stop me now. I done came way too far. can stop me now. I done came way too far. can stop me now. Stop me now.